he points out that, well, you know, all the crop circles are in crop crops. So, <laughs> as we all know, there's no water on farms. So I'm thinking the aliens hate water. I'm going to go near some. The only places where water is would be lakes, right? The, I'm going to go to a lake. <laughs> the fucking, the, that, which means that some of the aliens had to be making crop circles when like the water, the irrigation system kicked in, right? <laughs> what the fuck? This oh, is like oh. half a crop circle in a pool of <laughs> green blood or something. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because this is the internet and that's how it works. Now, fuck. Shit. Sorry, it's been a minute. I've been I've been gone for a bit. I'm readjusting. Anyway, it still works. I'm your host, No Illusions, <laughs> and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, you know what's the big problem with alien movies what, normally? What's that? The aliens are in the movie. Right, a lot of aliens. <laughs> they focus on the aliens way too much. Not enough subtlety. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Fantastic, Noah. Oh, man. I didn't realize this was a Christian movie, but it's... It's oh, Christian. it's all the fuck it. The <laughs> signs are signs from God. That's the 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 titular sign. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, well, it's very much a Christian movie. It counts. Speaking of which, tell us, Heath, what movie will we be breaking down today? We watch Break the signs. <laughs> signs. Signs. We watch signs with Mel Gibson. It's the story of God planning an alien invasion of Earth, and also killing a woman with a truck. In order to jam a baseball metaphor into a script and pwn an atheist pastor. <laughs> God's plan was the only one worse than the aliens in this movie. Yes. Yeah, very mysterious, <laughs> though. You got to admit. No, it's, that's, that's true. Easy. That's true. It the is. ways in this movie are it's, mysterious yeah. as fuck. <laughs> Lives up to that one. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved War of the Worlds, but there was both too much war and world you <laughs> will love this movie all right well okay so i saw this movie in theaters with expectations you guys yeah <laughs> yes and what was amazing is i saw this movie without having seen the sixth sense so everyone was like oh man Shyamalan's next movie like here we go and I saw it with friends who knew about movies and we all just sort of sat there and I was doing that thing that I have to do sometimes where smart people like a thing, but I don't know that it's bad yet. So I was just like, mm, yeah, I like how blurry he made the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> very artistic use of blur. Kind of not mees very much, like barely <laughs> mees on the send. And, uh, and Heath? Well, I just watched it for the first time. Oh, yeah. That's and that means I had prior knowledge that M Night Shyamalan also made The Happening, yeah, starring right. Marky yeah. Mark. So, <laughs> yeah. no expectations, and uh, they were met. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I had to work this question, and I was so excited. We were talking about this a couple of days ago. We're like, oh yeah, we're gonna do science. And, oh yeah, that's a Christian movie. That counts. And we're all talking about, oh, yeah, man, saw that in theaters, walked out trying to make it good in my own head. And he's like, I haven't seen it yet. And we're like, fucking what? Really? We oh. get to be with you the first time you talk to humans after watching that movie? Awesome. Oh. This is second only to putting on a wig and taking Heath's virginity for me in the level of joy <laughs> it brings me. And I've done both, so I can I'm tell you. i by the scale you've created <laughs> mathematically. <laughs> Not just mathematically. No, well, yeah, really, yeah, honestly, around. yeah. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, best worst, boarding up a door. Oh, my yeah! God! What I can't believe is it. happening? Okay, <laughs> at one point, the main characters are worried about aliens attacking, so they decide to barricade themselves in their house by boarding up the windows and doors. And we watch... <laughs> I, I couldn't deal. We watch Mel Gibson... Swing a door closed from the outside part <laughs> and then 
nail a board over it on the inside part. I oh, couldn't door handle it. Like, I wanted so bad for an alien to just open up the door and step over the little plank yeah, of wood right, that yeah, he nailed just... in <laughs> tears of laughter, the alien, and just kill the whole family. <laughs> no, you know what? Now there's a board here. That is inconvenient. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to <laughs> kneel. I'll have to kneel to walk through this. I'll have to crouch. All right. So that was truly fucking amazing. I was going to go with best worst name for Eli to have to repeatedly spell in the notes. All right. So there are I like, don't know which one you mean. <laughs> well said. All right. So he's taken something like 30 stabs at Joaquin in these notes. None of them are right. None of them are phonetic. None of them are the same. It's amazing. You can tell he knows there's a J and a Q in it. That's I, I am aware that there's a J and I a Q. I try to make Joaquin and Scrabble every time. That's all I know about this. <laughs> and I, of course, was going to go with best worst alien invasion plan. Yep. <laughs> famously, yes. Famously of all the movie aliens, even the comedy ones, even spaced invaders and shit. Worst goddamn alien invasion plan in the history of cinema. If these aliens had just come down one row at a time, they would have done better. Yeah. <laughs> E.T. does significantly better with his invasions yes. <laughs> than these aliens do. We will be following their progress throughout this movie. By the way, if you're following along at home and you want to play a game that I played on this rewatch, it's called The Aliens Are Nice, and this movie leads us to believe that Mel Gibson declares war on them by accident. Yeah. Uh, I'll inform as yep. we go, but th <laughs> there's a reasonable argument to be made. Great fan theory. Yeah, definitely improves the film. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. There are aliens trying to kill me, so I'm going to quick put a, a push sign on a pole door so that I'll be <laughs> safe. But when I get done with that, we'll <laughs> dive into the profound disappointment that is signs. <sighs> so bored. Tell me about it. Are you bored? So bored. Well, then why not play with your balls? Play, play with my balls? That's right. Manscaped is here to make sure your balls are smooth while you or your partner are playing with them. Manscaped promotes clean hygiene when it comes to shaving your balls thanks to their perfect package 3.0. There's no way this is a real product. Oh, it is. The perfect package 3.0 kit comes with the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof cordless body trimmer, and a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your manscaping routine. The Lawn Mower 3.0? That's right. This third-generation trimmer features a cutting-edge ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents. Millions of balls are about to be nick-free thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin-safe technology. Wow, my balls are so smooth! But that's not all. Inside the perfect package, you'll also find the Manscaped Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You're probably sitting on the couch with your hand on your balls anyway. Might as well keep them smooth as eggs and smelling fresh. Smooth as eggs, exactly. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code AWFUL at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code AWFUL. Make playing with your balls the best part of your day. Way ahead of you. Thanks, Manscaped. Manscaped. Sometimes, all you need to do is read the copy. M. M. Knight, what up? Shamalama ding dong. The Ooh. man. Hey, hey guys. That's okay. So, so, what's next? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> okay. Right? He doesn't know. Okay. Your next movie idea? I mean, we know you've got one. Oh, uh, um, oh, you, uh, of course, uh, of course I do, but, right. but I, I can only tell you guys uh, if we get you Mel Gibson, Joaquin Phoenix and Macaulay Culkin's brother done or done, done, did it. Yeah. Wow. Really that fast. Oh done. yeah. Anything for the ding dong. Ooh, ooh. You know, I don't love the nickname. Oh, okay. All right. So, huh? Oh, right. What do you uh, got? uh, it's about. Aliens. Uh, um, cool, cool. Uh, Love alien. Good aliens. Nice. Bad aliens. Uh, oh, uh, uh, bad, bad. Uh, so 
so they attack, but luckily, a little kid who can talk to dead people is uh, a... Oh. Oh, sorry, just real quick. That oh, sounds a you, lot. No, I'm sorry. Like I'm sorry. I miss, your I, you're right. Movie. I misspoke. I I said it wrong because I was thinking of that one. No, I'm uh-huh. sorry. A dead person who can talk to little kids tells them how to kill the aliens. Okay. And how do you kill the aliens? Uh, this is so great. I'm so sorry. I'm going to grab a, a coffee. Do you guys want anything? Uh, yeah, I'll take a water. Water. Oh, water is water is how you kill the aliens, or you would also like a water? Oh, uh, uh both. Both. Great. All right. We are going to make this movie. Fantastic. Yeah. Water. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what's it called? Oh, sorry. Uh, let me get that. Meeting in progress sign. I just got to put that up. Uh. Fantastic. Yeah. Signs. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, or at least we will be after the movie makes with its 11 minutes of opening credits. <laughs> yeah, that's positive for me. I'm just like, time moving. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I can't believe I'm not watching porn. This thing gets porn. <laughs> and to be fair, one of the logos is a man jumping off a cliff. And that is a great logo for this. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we all had a, a, a note on the music here. Mine was a cartoon robot is being chased through an otherwise serious horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, I just had. Pixar danger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the music, it feels like somehow like a witch snuck into a symphony hall and hijacked the entire symphony from the conductor. Ooh, okay. Like yeah. grabbed him and like <laughs> dressed up as a maestro and did a spell on all the scores and just like started conducting. And it's like doing a regular beautiful symphony. And then it's like, <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> all right. So. So we're going to open in a rural farmhouse where Mel Gibson wakes up by sitting straight up from a goddamn nightmare. Because <laughs> fuck you, Noah. Fuck yep. you. Yep. <laughs> so he's walking around doing his like morning ablutions or whatever, and suddenly he hears kids screaming out in the cornfields. <laughs> also, Joaquin Phoenix wakes up to the same thing. Apparently, he lives in the little mother-in-law apartment behind Mel Gibson. Yeah. And by the way, it wasn't originally going to be Joaquin Phoenix. No, it wasn't. I'm pretty sure Mark Ruffalo was supposed to have the role, but his brain intentionally developed a tumor just to get out of this movie. That's what (laughs) Yes, yeah, no, and then it was like, no, it's benign, it's benign. I was just saving you. (laughs) Well, no, it's a smart brain. The brain was like, oh, you know what's the perfect ruse? A benign tumor. Like, you have to deal with it for a second, and then you can't do the movie, but then you're fine. All right, so, yeah, so they all run out into the corn for a little while. Eventually, they come across the kids, and they do this really, like, big, long setup for this tense reveal, and then it's just, it's just corn laying down. (laughs) She might as well turn to him and be like, because he's like, what's the matter? What's the matter? She might as well turn to him and be like, well, it's a kind of a horror movie, so we needed a scary scary opening. opening. (laughs) (laughs) But now that right. you're here, what was the little girl screaming for? What was she was terrified when they walked out and found the corn laid down? <laughs> corn is supposed to be up, motherfuckers. I guess. I don't know. Mel Gibson runs up to his daughter here and he's like, did the corn hurt you? And she actually <laughs> says, ah, this is one of my favorite lines of the movie. She says, I think God did it. And I was like, Wow. Problem of evil, check. This counts. I think God hurt me with the corn. I don't know what that meant there. Excellent line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So they, they pan away. For, it's just, you know, look, by now, at this point in history, we had all seen way good crop circles. Yeah. Right? And so this lame-ass three circles with a line, that was not impressing <laughs> anybody. They go to pan away from it, and you're like, oh, it was Hollywood. I bet they can make a damn good crop circle. Oh, they chose not to, though. Huh. <laughs> Why? They decided to just do circle, circle, dot. Okay. It's up, up, down, down, left. Yeah, right, right. right yeah. yeah, exactly. It's the Konami code or the Cooties Cure one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then, oh, oh, and then M. Knight reassures us that he has not abandoned Philadelphia altogether. We're in, it comes up and it says Bucks County, Philadelphia, 30 miles from Philly or whatever. You know you live in a shit town when movie titles have to explain where you are in relation to a real place. <laughs> yeah. 
And when your title card tells us that the movie is next to Secret Lair, Pennsylvania, it's not a good start. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. I've, I've been there. So, okay, so Mel is on the phone. He's trying to sort out this bent-over corn cob shit, right? <laughs> there, he gets off the phone, and the kids are like, the dog peed. And I'm like, well, this movie's fucking action-packed, isn't it? <laughs> the dog peed. Should we kill it? <laughs> what happens? <laughs> yeah, they seem pretty confused by that. They're like, the dog peed, so I'm thinking alien invasion, right? It's an alien invasion. <laughs> <It's> probably, <laughs> so we'll murder the dog. <laughs> also... Did Mel Gibson postulate that maybe the crop circles were his like rural Pennsylvania nemesis who folded his corn down as a joke? Uh, his friend's kids or something that are the troublemakers in town? I know your kids are real pranksters. Did they create a series of intense shapes <laughs> in my corn? This is a prank war. <laughs> And, and by the way, he's on the phone here talking to the cop, I think, who's about to show up. Uh, no, he's talking to the friend of his whose sons he thinks are the. Oh, he's talking yeah. to the. OK, right. And he says, all right, well, I'm sure your sons were just essing around. But, you know, it's kind of messed up now. All right. He's a he's a former pastor. So, like, he doesn't like to say curse words, but essing around. I was like shitting around. That expression? <laughs> he was shitting. He thinks they were shitting around. And then I was like, wait, screwing? He can't say screwing? Oh, my God, screwing? that's probably right. Yeah, actually, that's probably right. Oh, <laughs> wow. Amazing. All right. So then we cut to, uh, this is Rory Culkin. This is Macaulay's little brother, apparently. He's a creepy-ass looking kid. He's a creepy-ass looking adult, too, as it turns out. This is where we first introduce the, the fact that the little sister, that his little sister doesn't like water. Yeah, fluoride conspiracy about- theorist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does this taste like fluoride? Do, do uh, you got to answer honestly? Do I seem autistic, like more than normal to you right now? <laughs> She's five. Yeah, yeah. And so, okay. And then I guess the cop shows up to check out his crop circles. Yeah, yeah. Matt Damon's mom from Ocean's Twelve is the cop. I lo- I like her a lot. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's a sweet movie. Ocean's Twelve is amazing. And not really though. Um, so fantastic. And not really though. <laughs> Last <laughs> words. <laughs> I edit this one, so yeah, not really. Fantastic. Last just, word. He just Last keeps word. saying "last word" for the rest. Oh, of the oh, that's <laughs> happening. <laughs> also, okay, wait. I have to cut in to talk about this too because this movie is about Last word. crop circles. <laughs> This was made in like 2001, 2002. We had known for a decade by then who did the crop circle. Like, we, like the guys who had done them had come out and shown everybody how they did it. And still after that, we were all walking around going, right, but how did they get made? It must have been aliens. And the guys are going like, no, 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 look, I'm doing it right now. It must have been aliens. That we should have known the Trump administration was coming right fucking then. Early warning sign. <laughs> well, and this movie will never call them crop circles. They'll call them crop signs. Yep. Like, like they were afraid of violating someone's crop circle <laughs> copyright. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the cop says, yeah, I don't think the people around here are capable of, you know, gently folding a corn no. stalk. So no. <laughs> it's got to be something way more sinister and complex than that. Oh, God, that was that was always that would the people who were all into the crop circles things would always talk about that. Like, no, they're not broken. They're just bent over. And I'm like, yeah, wouldn't that be what happened, though? Like, wouldn't <laughs> right. it take more to break them than just bend them over? I, I, anyway, it was always uh. a big fucking thing for those people. I don't know. Oh, also the cop is like, you know, it's funny these crop circles should show up because all of the animals in the county have been acting very foreshadowy lately. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, you mean like like the animals you and I both just left my children with? And she's yeah. like, yeah, just like yep. those oh, yeah. animals. She's been attacking, mm-hmm. ripping out the throats of five-year-old girls left and right. <laughs> Probably should have told you that. And she calls him father here. This is where we learn that he's a yeah. former pastor. Mm-hmm. And he's like, stop calling me father. I'm not a father anymore. Demon aliens folded my corn. I'm an atheist now. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and that's a big thing for the rest of the movie. He's like officially an apostate, all the way atheist, oh, yeah. angry, ridiculous, hates God. He's an atheist so much that he hates God. Right. <laughs> well, and exactly. And like every person who used to believe in God in a movie, the movie will resolve with him 
you know, seeing the error of his ways and once again believing in God. Spoiler, which is why it fucking it could have been different. Nope, it couldn't have. <laughs> no, it could not. Um, not on this not podcast. With, not with Mel fucking Gibson. <laughs> it no shot. <laughs> so, yeah, so they come back out of the corn, uh, Mel and the cop do, and the kid, the son, has just stabbed the dog with a barbecue fork because it tried to attack the sister. Like all the action in this movie, it happened off screen. <laughs> it we, did. We hear about it later. <laughs> also, I would have a lot more follow up questions than Mel Gibson has. He's like, oh, dog attacked you. So he stabbed it with the barbecue fork. Yep. Ho hum. All right. Let's. Yeah. <laughs> let's bury the dog. You just murdered small child. He's not like, hey, why'd you have a barbecue fork out by your slide? <laughs> also how'd you know how to stab a german shepherd right in the heart so easily yeah, what the exactly. fuck <laughs> all right so now we cut to that night mel is awakened in the middle of the night by the little girl reinforcing that water gimmick yet still more <laughs> which honestly i don't think they meant for this to be a pop scare but it was terrifying because this little five-year-old is right fucking next to him when he wakes up and Mel Gibson's like, fuck, please, God damn it, don't stand inches away from my face while I'm sleeping. New rule. She, she wakes him up. She's like, there's a monster outside my room. Also, did you know that most European countries no longer fluoridate their water? <laughs> so. Also, Newtown was a hoax and I would like some alkaline wild water from now on. Trying to kill my cancer with low pH. So he so he takes her back to bed or whatever. And he's like, so what are you thinking about, daughter? And she's like, your backstory about dead mom. He's like, dead mom. Right, right. Yep, I am an atheist. It's it's your mom or my mom that died, right? This is a movie. A mom is dead. That's all I know. So, yeah, right, right, exactly. So they're sitting there talking. That should be the title of God is dead. God and somebody's mom is dead. <laughs> So they're sitting on the bed talking when suddenly he looks out the window and the music goes to try to trick us into thinking there's something out there. There is nothing there. I paused the fucking video. Turn the brightness all the way up. We are definitely just looking at a roof with nothing on it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, there's supposed to be an alien there. Yeah. Right. So they decide to go outside and scare the aliens away but at this point they think maybe it's still the pranksters right yes yeah uh -huh. so <laughs> so joaquin phoenix says all right here's the plan we run around screaming like crazy people <laughs> yes and, and mel gibson's like uh, well how's that how's that helpful <laughs> also i don't sound natural when i curse so <laughs> i don't know and he, and Joaquin Phoenix is like, I don't know, just make loud noises, man. Just, we're, we're going to run out. We're going to make loud noises, okay? Yeah, Fine. and at this point I wrote, explain act crazy. Really, Mel Gibson? Yeah. You need someone to explain how to act yeah. crazy? <laughs> if there's two actors that don't need it explained to them how to act crazy, it's Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix and Mel Gibson. Absolutely. He might as well respond with, nah, this will be great for our career. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well... They run outside and Mel Gibson tries to yell things and he literally is like, I am mentally unstable. <laughs> the, the Jews started all the wars. You yeah. know, there was a cut where he yelled that. <laughs> so <laughs> many cuts. So many takes. That's where I assume 90% of this movie's budget went. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, yeah. So they run around the house and something is up on the roof. They see something on the roof, which is where it started. Right. <laughs> um, but we don't see it. We don't see the thing. We watch them look at something more interesting than the thing that we're looking at. <laughs> we sure do. Also, we see their swing set swinging back and forth as they <laughs> decide to walk back inside at the end of this. <laughs> Was a demon alien playing on the swing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. like, someone give me a push. No. So what? what what's the? All right. No, no, no. Let's get out of here. Let's go back to the ship. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I realize. Okay, but I'm jumping off though. I'm gonna don't jump off. You'll time. hurt your ankle. Push me super hard because I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> land and then I'm gonna. And that roll. never works. You hurt yourself last time. So, you so shot. what? What was supposed to have happened <laughs> is the alien was supposed to have leapt off of the roof and then run and gone so fast that he left the the swing swinging as he ran through. That's what's supposed to have happened. But yes, it really does look like there was a second alien that was just like, there's no way an alien wasn't like, <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. If you turn on alien subtitles for this movie, this whole scene, you can hear the alien saying parkour, parkour, parkour. <laughs> <laughs> but that a 
side with the running around the house screaming, I'm going to kick your ass and I'm mentally unstable. I really want to hear the alien side of this night. Ah. 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 All right, Johnson, how was your first mission to observe the <sighs> Earthlings? That was not great. Oh, you know how you said, check it out, see if they're peaceful? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. So I'm looking, right? I'm checking them out. The second they see me, they come screaming out of the house saying they're going to kick my ass. What? Wow. They, they said they were going to kick your ass. Yeah. One did. And the other one, the other one said, I'm insane. I'm dangerous. Wait, like literally said. Liter literally. I thought my translator was broken. Fuck. Shit. So I guess we kill him, huh? Yeah, I guess so. He, wait, he said. I'm insane. I'm dangerous. Word for word. I am telling you. Again, I'm saying aliens protagonist of the story. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I do want to see the like the letters from Iwo Jima version of this movie. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, OK, the next day they're filing a police report about the alien parkour, keeping in mind that apparently they saw it leap off of the roof over top of them to that swing set. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, some dude was on our roof, is what they told the cop. Okay, this this police department needs to start ignoring Mel Gibson a right? little bit more. Because <laughs> he called them and was like, uh, there was an alien on my swing set. I need you to come investigate right now. That's that's a no from the police department. <laughs> that needs to be a no. Right, Like especially if like the day before that, they were already out there looking at laid over corn. <laughs> no, man, you, get, you, you already had your one, okay? Oh, I love to the scene is so this is so fucking lame. They open the scene up with the cop going, hey, you know what would make a good walkie talkie if you need one in act two that you probably have laying around? <laughs> <laughs> Apropos of nothing. Baby <laughs> monitor. Yeah. And what I love about it is she's like, you know, a baby monitor is a walkie talkie. I mean, it's just the one way. So. Not a walkie talkie, but if no, it's just a like talkie. A <laughs> It's a talkie, and you can walk. You can walk with it if you want, technically. They have to let you walk with it. Is the word you're looking for radio? Because that's how we'll use it in this movie. Radio, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I'm a police officer. What does this movie think a baby monitor is? They seem to believe it is the most advanced piece of communication technology <laughs> that exists in the universe. That's like picking up radio signals from aliens in other galaxies and like communicating with the Hubble. Like they have no idea what's going on with this. At the fucking very least, they think it is a ham radio. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. All right. So, OK, so the cop. So they're talking to the cop about the thing that happened last night. And there's the weird like part where the cop lady wants to make sure that they understand that it could have been a lady parkour alien. This was the great. Why is, is this dialogue in the movie? Because, Eli, <sighs> because an out of town woman yelled recently and therefore they suspect that that could. I don't know. It never <laughs> it never comes back. Or I feel like there's a scene we missed where her and Joaquin had a terrible breakup. So they're awkwardly <laughs> fumbling their way through whether or not Swedish women exist as a punishment of some sort. Yeah. I think they were trying to make a joke and then it turned into accidentally some weird racism and they just kept it in anyway. Cause <laughs> the cop asks like, okay, uh, so far you described the night as dark. That's not that helpful. Is there anything else? And Joaquin Phoenix is like, uh, well, okay. Well, the alien was not a little person nor a woman because of course women can't run fast. And this female cop is like, that's incorrect. There's, you know, <laughs> Swedish Olympian, strong Aryan women can jump very high. <laughs> and they leave that in. It was so weird. Oh, I was really hoping she was going to challenge him to a jumping contest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, motherfucker. I'll go 100 meters with you right now, motherfucker. <laughs> so, <laughs> Just racing around the house while the kids watch. Pennsylvania's weird. This is a weird state. happens every time we have to call the cops. <laughs> I'm going to go kill the other dog. But so while... The <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, so while they're arguing about whether or not it's a lady alien or a man alien, uh, the little girl comes on to tell them that the news is cut into her favorite cartoons. 
So they go and they check it out. And wouldn't you know it, there are crop circles all over the world. And the news is telling everybody about it with the line that basically says either this is a super elaborate hoax or it isn't that. Thanks. The More at 11. That. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Well, and what's great is they explain because we do know what crop circles are. The cop lady's like, ah, you know, all it takes to make a crop circle is like two guys and a board. And so the news is like, but this would take 10, perhaps even 20 people. And so and 10 to 20, bo- or like five to 10 boards. How I guess, many actually. boards are there? Really? really <laughs> I mean, like that's ultimately that's, what, like, what you're just going to have so many boards sitting around at your house that you can board up all the windows and act. Th- you know what? Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. It's <laughs> Demon Aliens. I'm Walter Cronkite. It's so- <laughs> Demon Aliens. More at 11. <laughs> So, yeah, so the, the cop goes to leave and she's like, hey, you know what you should probably do at this point is you should take your kids into town and just kind of fuck around there until act one wraps up. Yeah, because we're not you know, we don't want to do the alien, the cool alien thing that we've introduced in this movie. We wasted later. most of our budget on cutting Mel Gibson yelling things. Yeah. About <laughs> people. Right. What if I were to trade you 74 takes of Mel Gibson yelling kike for the rest of the CGI <laughs> budget? Huh? <laughs> Huh? You want All some right. film reel of Mel Gibson <laughs> Who yelling are you kike? To in this bit? I don't know how to respond. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> the listeners, he. <laughs> I don't want to yes and this. I feel scared. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so they head into town. And, you know, in order to deprive the kid of the most important news item of their lives. And the, the two kids go to the bookstore. Mel Gibson goes to pick up some shit at the pharmacy. And Joaquin Phoenix goes to the military recruiting office, the army recruiting office. Just to hang out. Yep. Just to have a look around. Just to protect it with an assault rifle like you do. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love this line where uh, they're at the bookstore. The little kid says to the to the guy, he, he says, hey, do you have any books on extraterrestrials? And the guy's like, yeah, we have one. Uh, it's the last row, third book on the left. <laughs> what? what? Like, so, so M. Night Shyamalan, who wrote this movie, has A, never been to a bookstore, and B, doesn't know how that would work. <laughs> so, I assume yeah. you memorize where each book is <laughs> one at a time. And you just simply reference the side <laughs> and number. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a better system than which book and which side it's on, but ah, it's fine. Hey, luckily you sur- you asked for, uh, for like one of the 10, top 10 from the left. I mean, really, it's usually book 74 from the left or something. That's much harder. Yeah, row 24, third column over, book 16. No one's bought that one for a year. Wait, don't take it out of the show. Oh, fuck, now the whole system. We have to start over. <laughs> oh, oh, why didn't I have right. a better way of doing this? We're doing this, we're doing this autobiographically, so it's easier to memorize. This is crazy. <laughs> when we got them in order. Oh, also, by the way, I love that we keep cutting to like the radio where all the Americans are being uber credulous about these alien <laughs> stories. You know, the way right. Americans are. <laughs> Did they also did they make fun of city people here as if city people are crazy about aliens? Is that a yep. known thing? Yeah. Or is it actually the exact opposite? Yeah, it I'm is. pretty sure it's the opposite. So the kid asked for the book about aliens, and one of the owners, right after it's explained their insane memorized system of where books are, one of the owners is like, Oh yeah, no, no, no. Actually, yeah, we kept that one for the city people. We got sent an alien book by accident. We kept it. For the city people. Mm-hmm. What the fuck did that mean? Hello, I'm a metrosexual from New York City. Maybe you've heard of it. I'd like to peruse your books that will appeal to me. You know, aliens, fancy cravats, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any books about traffic, that's, perhaps? That's what they're going for. Apparently, Clearly. yes. <laughs> All right, so yeah. So meanwhile, Mel's over at the pharmacy and the girl at the pharmacy wants to tell him about all the blowjobs she gave so she can not go to hell if the aliens end the world, apparently. Oh, yep. it's the best. She's like, hey, can I can I confess to you? And he's like, I'm I'm actually not a preacher anymore. And she's like, yeah, but you know, still. <laughs> God's dead, asshole. Get out of here. <laughs> not a father. I mean, I could just tell you secrets as a guy, right? And he's like, well, it's. It's kind of creepy when I'm not wearing a weird outfit, but sure, sure. (laughs) (laughs) 
And then also, so over at the Army Recruiting Office, we get the monologue, the exposition monologue that the military guy, the the, the recruiter, just dives into oh, unsolicited. This actor went for it. Too. He absolutely. First of all, he's apparently a colonel because he is covered in medals. Like the high <laughs> grand poobah of the army runs this recruiting center in Bucksville, Pennsylvania. In Bucks County, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Exactly. Also, he begins monologuing the moment Joaquin walks in the room. Yep. Like, it, it, Joaquin walks in the room, starts to pick up a pamphlet, and he's like, it's a ground tactic, you know. What? <laughs> what? Wait, feels like you were halfway into something. I'm, Can I'm you start still, again at least? I'm still going. I'm still going, though. Wanted him to do that thing that he's like, oh, what? Did you say something about the aliens? Well, uh, here's my theory uh, about the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what happens. Yeah, except without the setup. And then he gets through his whole little monologue and then he looks to Joaquin Phoenix and says, wait a minute, I recognize your backstory, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. This is where we learn that he was a minor league baseball player with the home run records yeah. all over the place and shit. Right. But and they materialize the strikeout a, record. Yeah, also. they materialize a second character to shit on his record. Yeah. Which Michael Showalter, by the way, yes! which is a weird cameo. <laughs> Michael Showalter's in it as like the dude in the cut off leather jacket recruiting, getting recruited by the army. And he's just like, yeah, he's the home run king, but also the strikeout king. And then we get this is apparently going to be a big deal. We get a line from Joaquin Phoenix where he stops and like looks at the camera and he's like, yeah, that's right. I had the strikeout record. Felt wrong not to swing. Dot, dot, dot. Did you say dot, dot, dot? <laughs> Don't worry. This uh, will get used later. I hate to tell you this, but that's a weird thing to say unless that later pays off in your life. Oh, it pays well, off. No, it pays no, off. No, I'm, no, I'm planning for it to pay there off. There are so goddamn many moments where like all the characters should turn to the guy and say, oh, are you setting up for a third act twist? I am. <laughs> yes. Just shush, shush. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be sweet. Don't, don't fuck it up. Are you doodly doing right now? <laughs> so doodly? You doodly doing. Nope. What? <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, the the son is uh, is reading the alien book in case he needs to take over the exposition later when we no longer have this army character around. Right. And little girl is still being weird about the water. At this point, I wrote in my notes, someday I hope it turns out that sad kills aliens. Then you'll all be sorry. Then you'll all want me around. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So they, so then they all meet at the pizzeria. And this is, oh, this is where we get the director cameo, right? This is where M. Night Shyam the, the family all sees M. Night Shyamalan walking through town. <laughs> yep. M. Night Shyamalan was like, you know, I did crush it in The Sixth Sense, the way I stared directly into the camera and didn't know what to do with my hands. I need a bigger part in this movie. Yep. Yeah. You know what the problem was, though? Bruce Willis didn't know how to read my amazing lines. I think I'm going to make myself, <laughs> I'm the only person who could act these lines out. Yeah. Yeah. But the the family sees him and they're like, is that fucking M. Night Shyamalan? Are we <laughs> are we in a bad movie? This, this feels weird. I don't know what's happening. Turns out he is the guy who got into a car accident with Mel Gibson's wife. Yes. But here's the thing, though, is that like, yes, we know that now because we watched the whole movie. But until that's revealed in the film... This is just the entire family staring angrily at the only brown person in Bucks County, yeah, Pennsylvania. Okay. <laughs> that was my experience on first watch. Thank you, Noah. That was weird. Oh, see, for me, it was like running into your ex too soon after the breakup. They were like, oh, look, it's it's the guy that killed mom. Do we say hi? That feels weird, right? <laughs> no. You know, what is we'll do a head nod. As he <laughs> walks by, we'll all do a head nod. Head yeah, nod's cool. So Right. But what I'm watching is just like what Noah said. A not white person gets out of his car, looks into a restaurant, sees Mel Gibson fucking <laughs> glaring at him. <laughs> yes. And is like, I was just checking the specs on the sidewalk. It's good. It's good. Back in my car. Speed away. Yes. That was my also, experience. Also, this moment. speed away, dude. Come on. You <laughs> killed this guy's wife with your reckless driving and you're going to squawk your fucking tires as yeah. you pull away from his family. <laughs> Not tasteful. <laughs> Might as well get out and be like, Oh no, I hit. Some I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> uh, huh? oh Jesus. By the way, I found yeah. some teeth in the front grate. Do you want that? I don't know if you're doing a tooth fairy thing. 
with the kids. <laughs> All right. uh, I sent you a car wash bill uh, like two, three weeks ago, and I have. <laughs> I just want to make sure you got it. A little bit. Sc- it was sc- got scratched. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I know you're good for it. We'll talk later. We'll talk later. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Can I get your information, though? Seriously. <laughs> All right. So he drives away. The, the family gets home, and suddenly. Uh, b- before they get out of the car, there's some weird noise on that baby monitor that we shoehorned into this goddamn story a few seconds ago. The kid could have just had a walkie talkie. Uh, or it could be on the right. car radio. You <laughs> right? know, yes. the radio that they the radio? listened to earlier. Word. Yeah. All right. But yeah, the, the, apparently these fucking aliens did not think this invasion through at all because they're getting the secret, uh, communications unencrypted. On a baby <laughs> monitor. <laughs> right. Or this was a message to the humans? Like like the aliens made it oh. across the universe, but didn't figure out fucking English before they came? <laughs> <laughs> Hell of an oversight. Now, we have to point out, too, that this is a nine and a half minute scene, right? They start to hear something, and it's kind of like static, but maybe there's something behind the static, and they all have to move, and then the, the kid has to climb on the car and hold it super high. Like, eight minutes, we listen to him listen to static, only to eventually reveal this poppy-sounding, crappy alien sound effect. Right. It, we, we spend nine minutes watching them make a fucking human pyramid so that we can get... Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We just spent five minutes setting up Erg Gerg Poppily Pop, so I need a break. But we'll be back in a minute with even more sides. Captain. Yes, York Blorg. Quick question. Do you know uh, human? Uh, the, the language? Yeah, the language. Of course not. Right. Uh, do you know... Like, who on the ship does know human? Oh, I, uh, what's, well, it's gotta be someone, right? Uh, I can't imagine they would have sent us all the way here without somebody who spoke human. Yeah, yeah, you, you know what? I bet Frank knows human. Frank? Frank? What's up? You know human, right? Um, nope. I know squirrel. Mm. Squirrel. Is that close to human? No, not not even a little. Fuck. Oh. Ah, it'll be fine, right? I think it'll be fine. I, I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Same thing. And we're back, and we're going to open up with that. It's that night, and now Mel is heading outside to check on his tortured little slave dogs. So, like, we don't they talk about this enough in this movie. The fucking dogs... Are, these these people are terrible fucking dog owners. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, horrible. They might as well use them for bait in a trap later in the movie. <laughs> yeah. So he goes out and he, the dog is barking all crazy and shit into the corn. So he gets a flashlight to check and see what the dog's barking at. Because that's what you do when your dog barks at night. My God, this man must chase so many motherfucking skunks. <laughs> I really wanted the camera to pan around from the barking dog. And there's an alien just halfway through a crop circle. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> shit. Shit. Hey, dog. <laughs> so uh, I did the circle dot thing upside down. My boss is going to kill me. <laughs> do you mind grabbing the other side of this Can board? You just, <laughs> you just push it. <laughs> So, yeah, so he's walking through the fucking corn for quite a while, and then eventually he emerges into one of the paths, and then he's almost like, right, there's paths through this shit. Why was I just walking? All right, all right, paths. But then there's an alien sound, and then there's a pop scare and shit. There's the part where he drops his flashlight. Yep, he sees the alien's leg. We get to alien gam pop scare. (laughs) The alien's out, though. That's fucking manhunt. That alien's a fucking cheater. If he, if he doesn't go back to the house, that alien is cheating. Ah, flashlight tag. Yeah, yeah. that's 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 official. Also, just a general question. If the aliens didn't make these crop circles, and let's say they landed in the, the next town over, what goes wrong? How does that matter? If you're trying plot? to break into the wrong fucking basement, keep up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. it's a good thing they used a bent-over plant-based geolocation system. There's nothing that could go wrong with that. 
Look, I think we all agree that there's no more permanent landmarks on the planet Earth than fields of corn. They never change. <laughs> Bunch of fucking humans just go out and make a larger crop circle over their symbols. God damn it. Uh, what? It says don't land in circle dot. What? This is, uh, we go back. We go back. Fucking confusing. I didn't like Ghostbusters 3. What does that mean? Why would they write that? <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, so Mel Gibson goes back to his house and he's like, guys, I hate to break this to you, but it is act fucking two. I just saw <laughs> yeah. an alien leg. <laughs> so the TV now they're they're like uh, they're talking all about like um, lights over Mexico City. Fucking the, the sun runs up and he's like, I've got to tape this on our VHS tapes. And I'm like, oh, I'm so fucking old. <laughs> Oh, I wanted so badly for this to be realistically shot. Like he goes to put it in and recording it. And he's like, well, it says it's on the wrong channel. Well, put the TV to the first. <laughs> no, not the, ca the cable box is different than the TV. Move, this move. Nothing to do with the cable box. How many times do I tell you this? Turn the VCR. You can just turn that off. The cable off. box does not even have to be on. What are you doing? Turn everything off. No, you're holding the remote now for the cable box. That's not going to do anything, obviously. <laughs> Let's take all the remotes and put them on the center of the dining room table, and then we can eliminate... I marked it in masking tape. That says cable box. Jesus. <laughs> I put it on top of the cable box. <laughs> the masking tape. <laughs> so this is my favorite movie if there's just a 45-minute back fight. <laughs> they missed their chance. All right, so like, yeah, so they watch some some news, and then later that night, the kids have fallen asleep, and Mel and Joaquin are chatting about how, you know, end of the world the all of this is, and Joaquin turns to him, and he's like, hey, man, um, you want to set up the third act twist now? It seems like this would be a great time for it. Yeah. He asks Mel Gibson, he, he goes, is this the apocalypse? You're a pastor, right? This is the apocalypse? And Mel Gibson's like, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely the apocalypse. And then he goes into this speech that is nonsense. He's like, yep, so let me explain to you, brother. Two types of people in the world. Some people think luck is God. Other people think alien attacks are bad. Um, <laughs> is that helpful? Wait, no, the question is, what kind of person are you? A good person or an atheist? Uh, yeah. It's a way of phrasing the actual question that I ask you in this movie. Hey, I was just impressed that I got to hear the sentence, is it possible that there are no coincidences when someone wasn't mm. trying to fuck me? Nope. <laughs> so that was nice, right? It's that was refreshing. also not possible. No. That is not a possibility. <laughs> th th things coincide. There will be things that coincide. Deal with it. Yeah, to be clear, you can't even successfully imagine such a world. <laughs> so right. no is the answer. Is there temporality? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> are there multiple things yep all right look at that we both rolled a six or did we <laughs> we did <laughs> don't roll again ah <laughs> oh. and then he's like all right well let me tell you my last my wife's last words just in case that makes sense uh in the <laughs> act three setup what was, since. what was that yeah it yeah right it's just entirely a stupid setup he goes yeah, so one other thing, right before my wife died, she said, swing away. And I'm thinking to myself, like, all right, well, that's an awkward moment for sex. You were at, <laughs> at a car crash scene. We're about to find out. She's pinned from the waist down. You could probably do mouth stuff, but still, it just that's feels feels God. weird for you to get on the hood. There are paramedics there. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, <laughs> but it's supposed to be a, the baseball thing that, M. Knight does not. He's yeah. sorry, He's trying so hard to cram baseball into there. Yeah. So bad. Swing away is not the movie. This is time for a take sign, just so you know. <laughs> if you're going to do a baseball thing. And, and Joaquin Phoenix is like, what the fuck are you even talking about? Swing away. And Mel Gibson's like, oh, yeah. Well, bottom line, atheism wins is what I mean. Well, atheism. Right. But, but the nihilistic bullshit atheism of Hollywood, right? Where he goes like, we're all on our own, brother who moved in with me to help raise my children after my wife died on our own. No one will help us. <laughs> we're all alone. Also, is his implication there that if she had said the right pithy catchphrase, he'd still be religious? <laughs> That's a lot of pressure to put on her in her <laughs> last moment. Penny saved yeah. as a penny earned. Thanks, Jesus. What the fuck do you want? She's like, 
three one count, you want to look for a pitch you can drive, but otherwise, hey, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Were my last words as I was crushed to death not moving enough for you, Mel Gibson? <laughs> so. Most people's last words are like, ow, I pooped. Uh. Baseball is 90% mental. No, hold on. Physical. Yogi Berra. It's the. It's their different <laughs> baseball. Same metrics only works if everyone's using it. <laughs> no. No. So. <laughs> but nice try. So, okay. So then we have the very momentary flashback to the dead wife. Right? <laughs> but, but, but it's too early in the movie. The movie almost goes, oh, wait, this would make no fucking sense now. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Yes. Go back too, to too what early. you were doing. <laughs> so instead, we just get him walking over to the cop, the only cop in this town, apparently. And the wife is like, hey, uh, your wife is, how do I say this? Okay, so the word is squished, but there's got to be a <laughs> sensitive word for squ squished. <laughs> Good news, bad news? What? <laughs> no, you Come know what? On. That's really just a misdirect. It's all bad. Squished. There's got to be a not silly word for squish. She's been squashed. Wow. Squashed is not better. No. <laughs> if anything, it's more vivid. <laughs> you know halves and holes? So... Half. <laughs> All right. So then we get Mel waking up in the living room. And I'm like, don't these fucking people have jobs to go to at some point? Don't people <laughs> still need gas or something? <laughs> and so I guess Joaquin is watching television in the closet because they thought that'd be nice and humorous. This is where he explains that the crop circles are a navigational system because the aliens are so goddamn bad at invasions they couldn't think of a better way to do navigation than to send parties. Like, how did the people who were making the symbols know where to make them if that's the <laughs> navigation system? Anyway. Yeah, here. they managed to fly across galaxies and, yep. as we find out right now, invent invisibility technology. They, they turn their ships invisible here, but they couldn't have, like, an iPad showing them where to land. Nope. Which yeah, they apparently had to show them where to make the crop circles. So yeah, just use those again. Don't make the circles. Yeah, it sucks. But the Milky Way, the edge of the Milky Way, is exactly where their alien ways stops working, and they're just fucking lost without it. You know, <laughs> okay. just totally. I don't think the edge of the Milky Way would. I, I think you were going for something a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted a shot. Of inside the spaceship and the aliens trying to refold one of those big fucking maps. And he's like, how? It was, it was this big. <laughs> it's, how does it refold? Don't say along the lines. I will kill you. If you say along the lines, I'll kill it's you like with a shovel. fitted sheet. A what? <laughs> oh, and then there's this great moment here. Okay. So Mel Gibson is talking to his kids because the kid is reading the alien book so he can be the source of exposition from here on out. But they throw this weird ass thing in here where the, the kid says, yeah, according to this book, the aliens will be vegetarian because everyone who's smart enough to come up with, you know, intergalactic travel would also be vegetarian. <laughs> Super yeah. smart. Yeah. Oh. But most importantly, you know, we're not going to lose a fight to a bunch of vegetarians. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they're at the peace talks and the aliens are just like, mm, I am so, so sorry. I have a butter allergy and a cheese allergy. <laughs> also, this tomato juice is like ice cold and I have tooth sensitivity. And they're just like, okay, we're, we're doing war. We're warring of the world. I don't know what the plan was, but this is war of the worlds now. He also says that the aliens are either there to be our friends or kill us. Yeah. You know, like. How we went to the moon to either make friends or kill the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I also love that he spends all this time going about like, yeah, they must be super, super, super smart. I mean, not door opening Google Maps levels of smart, but super, <laughs> no. super vegetarian levels of smart. Yeah. yeah. By the way, according to libertarians, this is just the invisible hand that guides the galaxy. You got to yeah. deal with it, you know, <laughs> just aliens being... <laughs> A little smarter. We got to, you know, not not their fault. <laughs> All right. And so then there's this really dumb moment where, like, they're looking through the alien book and there's a picture of exactly their house getting shot by aliens with exactly so them stupid. standing in front of it. <laughs> so fucking stupid. That Mel Gibson's face sticking out the window. 
What? By the way, apparently M. Night Shyamalan's daughter drew that picture or did that artwork. So this is literally like the artwork on the refrigerator of movies. Oh, this wow. is great, honey. We're going to put this in the multi-million dollar blockbuster. Yep. Yes, we are. Absolutely is what happened. Yeah. <laughs> did this movie make money? Yeah. Yeah. It made a ton of money. Oh, it made a ton of money. <sighs> All of his movies make money. It's so sad. They always make money. Everyone goes and sees them. All right. So, okay. So they get a phone call and it's M. Night Shyamalan. So Mel Gibson says, hey, you, you guys hang out here. I'm going to go talk to the guy that killed my wife with his car. And of course, if I'm Joaquin Phoenix, I assume he's going to go kill that dude before the aliens just finish off humanity and rob him of the opportunity. Right? <laughs> that would okay. make a lot of sense. That's amazing. I did not think of that, but that's great. <laughs> All right. Clock's running on redemption and revenge. I figure revenge than redemption, and then I'm good, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> a couple, couple days. Such a better movie is trying to kill the guy who killed your wife during an alien apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then also, this is so fucking stupid. They, they introduced the idea that apparently the little girl has ominous dream premonitions that come true. This doesn't move the plot forward at all. It's just like, oh, also, you know what? Well, I, I didn't surprise. It didn't occur to us to mention this earlier, but the little girl is psychic. Also, yeah. she's not. It turns out her vision is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> she goes over and hugs the brother and she's like, we I don't when you want have prophetic dreams that don't come true. Those are just dreams. Those are just dreams. You yeah, just you're, dream. just a, you're just a jerk. In fact, <laughs> the only thing this little girl has demonstrated is pretty severe mental illness. Yeah, right. But don't worry, because the movie will always ignore it, no matter what she does or says. Yep. All right. So so Mel Gibson shows up at M. Night's house. He looks around. He looks in the in the windows, and you can see that there's been quite a tussle there. This goes on for a very long time before he notices that M. Night is actually out in his driveway in the truck. Which, A, makes you wonder where the fuck Mel Gibson parks, but also, B, makes you wonder, <laughs> why didn't M. Night, like, go, hey, man, I'm in the driveway. Mel, Stop beep, looking beep. into my house, please. <laughs> I'm right here. Yeah. No, I, I get it. You know that thing where you're in a car and someone's looking for you and they're too close. You don't want to beep because maybe it'll scare them. So you're trying to do the wavy arms thing and then they're too <laughs> far away. So you feel like an asshole for doing the beepy thing because why didn't you do it when they were closer? I get it. I get it, M. Night. <laughs> What's happening with you and Uber delivery? That's weird. <laughs> but Mel Gibson finally walks over to M. Night Shyamalan's truck and he's like, hey, buddy, you just... Hanging out in the the murder weapon of my wife. <laughs> How's that going? I wanted Mel to jump on the trunk. Hey, is this familiar? Huh? huh? Okay. Hey, Classic. swing away, swing away. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? It's two for two. So I'm here to murder you before the aliens do. He goes, he's but like, he's not. No, no, no. And M Night's like, hey man, I totally meant to apologize for the. The wife that I killed for killing my wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I went. And, I meant. To, I I I meant to meet it. You know how it is. Because then, like, I've just been. It's like now. It's been a month. You know. Like yeah. you probably didn't even remember that I killed. But yeah, <laughs> Hallmark doesn't make a I squished yeah. your wife card. It's uh, uh, isn't it like a wedding gift? You can apologize for murdering a wife within a year. I, I feel like it's a year. <laughs> so and then and, and then there's this weird moment where he like. He's like, you know, man, what are the odds, though, right, that, like, she would be there and I would be, especially if there was a loving God, that would make no fuck. It's, you know what? Never mind. I, I'm going to start over. We're going to start this hypothetical <laughs> over. Also, just to be clear, because I, I want you to know I'm a good guy. I have never squished anyone before or <laughs> since. That's the only person I <laughs> ever wife. squished. It just happened to be your wife. Oh, so I'm weird. not one of those guys who just goes around squishing people. <laughs> I want you to know that <laughs> about me. Because I know that asshole. I'm not I'm not him. I'm not him. <laughs> oh, and this is also where like M. Night says, oh, yeah. Also, um, I'm leaving here to go to the lake because I heard that the aliens don't like water. Yeah. From from me when I was writing. Yeah, this right. Movie. Yeah, right. He points out that, well, you know, all the crop circles are in crop crops. So. <laughs> Those aren't in water, um, really. And you know, as, as we all know, there's no water on farms. So I'm thinking the aliens hate water. I'm going to go near some. The only places where water is would be lakes, right? The, so I'm going to go to a lake. <laughs> the fucking, th that, which means that some of the aliens had to be making crop circles when like 
the water, the irrigation system kicked in, right? <laughs> what the fuck? This ah, is like ah. half a crop circle in a pool of <laughs> green blood or something. <laughs> also, the aliens at this very moment are literally parked in clouds, just hovering yep. above the earth. Trying to like build a moment, and just regular <laughs> air has water, not just clouds. Yeah, just all oh, the yeah. air oh, yeah. has water. <laughs> but maybe they're just sitting up there, going like, "So the whole planet's covered in water." Ah, oh, this is fucking. Oh, this sucks. Do we still? It just falls out of the. Yeah, <sighs> maybe it's like the alien version of when you go to a party and like no one's there, but you're there. So you got to <laughs> figure out how long till you can leave. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want them to think that we just. Uh, yeah. Seems so fucking rude if we just left now. <laughs> all right. So meanwhile, all right. Joaquin is watching the news some more. We get this movie's best scene by far, right? There's the the birthday party scene, the found footage oh, alien fantastic. scene. It's we're 58 minutes into the goddamn movie. We're finally going to see a more or less unobscured view of the aliens. We learned that the aliens didn't bring guns or pants on their intergalactic <laughs> invasion. <laughs> Hell of a game plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the news is like, yeah, so we just got this video in from Brazil uh, like two minutes ago of aliens. We figured we might as well just go ahead and air it, though, right? Like, you know, we're a news station. With two minutes, we've had this alien footage. It's probably legit. But don't worry, we didn't cut it to the alien part. You're going to have to watch an entire <laughs> quinceanera. <laughs> yeah, no, we want to build it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're watching... Joaquin Phoenix watched this on the news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and he, so, yeah, it's a quinceanera. Eventually, we see uh, a naked green person, which is an alien. Yep. And that's like the big pop scare. But during this moment, <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix yells at the Brazilian kids in Spanish, which just made me very, very angry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did, didn't he? And then, meanwhile, back over at M. Night Shyamalan's house, Apparently, M. Night has trapped one of the aliens in his pantry. And this is how he informs our protagonist. Anyways, there's an alien in my pantry. Bye. Yep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Can I get you to say you're cool about me murdering your wife just uh, last time? <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, uh, did you say something? <laughs> no. Oh, there's an alien in my pantry. Bye. Bye. Later. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So Mel Gibson goes in to check out the pantry and, and see about this alien. Now, at this point, he's still committed to the it's a hoax concept, right? So he's yelling through the pantry door like, hey, uh, just so you know, I know uh, that you are not an alien. You are. Okay, but at this moment, Mel Gibson has already literally seen multiple yep. aliens. <laughs> yes, and there are UFOs floating in fucking space on CNN right ab above Mexico City. Yes. Typical atheist denying the information in front of him. Yeah. <laughs> but again, imagine how much this fucking sucks for the alien, right? The aliens sitting there and assuming they can understand English, which maybe they can, maybe they can't. You're trapped. Some guy fought you, stuffed you in his pantry, and then some other guy comes by and is like, hello, I'm the police. You're not real. And you're just <laughs> like, this is the fucking weirdest invasion. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Do you have a dehumidifier out there? If you don't mind? I wanted the alien to be like, yep, that's right. It's me. Frank the prankster. Go I'm ahead just a prankster in a naked green suit. Open the door so I can come out and apologize. With my one penis. Just like we both have. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so and then like the, we get the moment where he's like peeking under the door with his little uh with his knife and then the alien sticks his fingers through the door and Mel Gibson chops them off. To this point, the aliens have done nothing violent, nothing to suggest violence whatsoever. He just sees alien fingers, he's like, Oh gross, chop them off. Yeah, the aliens have exclusively checked out humans and humans have been like, I'm going to kick your ass. I'm ill. Let me trap you in my pantry. Let me attack you with a knife. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's their experience. All right. So Mel gets home and he goes, he turns to the sun. He's like, hey, you've been reading that alien book. Could you please explain away the fact that the aliens are naked and unarmed? It makes no goddamn <laughs> sense. 
<laughs> He's like, yeah, well, the you know, the aliens, they'd want to um, challenge us to a boxing match, right? Uh-huh. Well, Why, though? Well, okay, so, but they, they, he explains this. This is so fucking lame and stupid. He's like, well, they knew if they brought their alien weapons, we would use nukes against them, and then the planet would be destroyed. And then nobody goes, right, but couldn't we still use nukes against them? Oh, fuck, still use nukes. God. <laughs> Well, I didn't think of it, so the aliens ain't. It. <laughs> they're one up on us, huh? And then the and they're like the the oh, there's this amazing moment too. He's like, well, does the book say what the aliens would want? And he says there are two possibilities. One is that they're benign and that they don't want to kill us. And then and then Mel Gibson goes, well, what's the other possibility? <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Dad. <laughs> What's the other possibility? They're here to seduce us. What do you think, man? <laughs> Mel Gibson goes, well, I hear they don't like water. And the kids are like, dude, that'd be such a dumb fucking twist. It rains on this planet. <laughs> oh, they don't like water. Okay, so we'll defeat them with a garden hose. <laughs> Idiot. Okay, we're on a farm. We literally have an alien destroying system built into yeah. our property. <laughs> right. Oh, Jesus. He's like, okay, so to be clear, uh, when I was over at the vet's house, I saw an alien. This is fingers. Uh, yeah. This he is says, fingers. <laughs> he says it wanted to harm me. And it's like, yeah, man, because you locked it in a closet and then stabbed it. He yeah, right. Are you now? I felt threatened, so I stood my ground. <laughs> <laughs> Poor alien was just trying to jog. Alien had skittles. <laughs> uh, little, little, little too soon, Eli Heath. You're you nailed it. You're you're good. You're good on your stuff. <laughs> just saying. Grand jury still hasn't indicted Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So and then oh, this is amazing. So Mel Gibson turns to the kids and they're, they're good, they have the argument right. Like he's like, well, I think we should go to the lake, and the kids are like, I think we should stay here, and then they vote and argue and and all that shit. He gives himself two votes for the dead mom. Yeah. 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 It's a pretty good trick. <laughs> pretty good trick. There's a tie at first, and I wanted him to be like, do, do we let the alien vote and then do the opposite? <laughs> How do we? <laughs> All right. You know what? You two kids live in the same room. That just counts as one. Gerrymandering's legal in Pennsylvania. Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Tell you what. Race to kill the dog. Whoever kills the dog first gets their <laughs> All right, so but eventually they decide to stay at home for the alien invasion, and Mel Gibson goes, "Okay, well we need to board up all these windows." And and Joaquin goes, "Why?" And Mel Gibson goes, "So that everyone who ever sees this movie will have something to make fun of about it forever." <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, these aliens again—they can cross galaxies, but they can't get past wood. Wood, small amounts of wood. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right. So I'll tell you what, we've got an entire act worth of people sitting in a boarded up fucking basement while more interesting shit goes on elsewhere to deal with. So I need a break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Noah be able to give Act 3 the hard sell? Will he give up immediately <laughs> upon trying to think of one possible suspenseful fucking question one could pose about this <laughs> shitty ass movie? You ever think pimentos just want to do their own thing? Find out the answers to these huh. questions and more when we return for the somehow not career-ending conclusion of Signs. All right, Yarblorgians, today we conquer the Earth. Hooray! Borg, Borg. Uh, yeah, sorry, question. Yeah, uh, sir, sorry. Uh, how? <laughs> We're going to kick their asses. That's how. Yeah, kick their asses. Right. Mm, yeah. Sorry, just seems like we came an awful long way naked. Do we have, like, futuristic space guns or... <laughs> space guns. Listen uh -huh. to Greg Crack over here. Idiot. Right. So we're, no, on the space guns, just gonna, just gonna punch him to death? Is that the... That, that is the plan. It's... This is probably fine. I feel like we say that a lot about this mission. I said it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay. And we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to open up on them finishing up their preparation for the 
impending alien invasion slash high wind advisory. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you have that many boards lying around? Anyway, anyway, yeah, okay. Old man boards. <laughs> okay, no, actually, yeah, you're right. In a farm, yeah. All old men have so many boards. I don't you're know right. how they get them, but yep. they do. Yep. They all have them. At least back then they did, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that will still be a thing when I'm an old man, but yeah. I'm going to get my dad's old man boards. I'm going to <laughs> That's what it is. It's a hereditary system. <laughs> yeah, there you go. In case of an alien invasion. yeah. It's like money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the news comes on, and, and they tell everybody that, hey, man, the, the, there are aliens appearing within a mile of every one of these crop circles. So apparently the, the fucking aliens forewarned us about all 274 invasion points. Right. Luckily, <laughs> we humans, the peace-loving creatures we are, don't have any guns or anybody with guns near any yeah. of those circles. Yeah. So uh, hope you all know risk control. Also, by the way, like I have to point this out because the news keeps talking about what other cities have crop circles, and it's always like Nairobi and Jerusalem, also Bucks County, Pennsylvania, but, you know, also <laughs> mostly Nairobi and stuff. Yeah, but those aliens pissed their boss off. They were just like, oh, is this about me not coming to your Blark Day party? <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Fox County is very important to the mission. <laughs> you have to take over an entire farmhouse with four people in it. This seems to be a desert also with no water. Nope. All right. All right. We need to collect some racism on our mission. Go to Pennsylvania. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Also, by the way, this whole time, I couldn't get this out of my head. How is baseball going to fix this? Because they set up all this <laughs> yeah, baseball Yeah, shit. right. <laughs> like, uh, and I'm thinking like, all right, they build a baseball field in the corn. And <laughs> oh, oh, all right. All and right. Like, ghost army of white supremacist dead baseball players beats up the aliens. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe there's a Space know. Jam situation. They yeah. challenge the aliens. Oh, to a game. there you go. Yeah. There you go. If you build it, they will leave. <laughs> he will leave. I love there's a moment here where uh, Joaquin Phoenix goes, it's like War of the Worlds. I'm like, don't fucking flatter yourself, M. Knight. <laughs> yeah. Which is pretty much how everyone else in the movie reacts. They're like, is it like War of the Worlds? <laughs> <laughs> the guy on the news is like, everyone's flocking to churches. Boy, the world sure needs all its reverence right now. <laughs> you everybody's going to churches so we're all gonna die Most, <laughs> mostly in churches i guess when all hope is lost yeah Gee, and then of course we have the whole scene where they all decide what they want for their death row inmate meal before they die <laughs> right. okay here's my question about their death row inmate meal little boy french toast little girl spaghetti uh yeah joaquin phoenix wants chinese food does Mel Gibson make him like teriyaki chicken? B busts out the walk, I yeah. reckon, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. They taught us to make mean stir fry in seminary. You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So everybody's going to have their favorite meal, but then they have to have the, the fight right before the before the meal about whether or not they're going to say a prayer. <laughs> oh, my. This, this is the best. This fight might as well start with, <laughs> well, the script says we have a fight now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Little five year old girl is like, hey, let's say a prayer. Fuck you. We are atheists here. Yes. Yeah, it's the best. You killed mom. The little girl's crying and I'm just like writing in my notes. Yep, that that damn atheism always making children cry. <laughs> there's no crying in baseball or atheism now that I think about God it. Damn no, there's it. none. None of that. <laughs> and then <laughs> Bill Gibson gets all mad because the family is like Hey, you just, you know, yelled fuck you at a five-year-old child. And he's like, now I eat all your food in your fucking faces. Whatever. <laughs> I, I eat all the food. He's just stuffing his face. He's like, it's my dad, okay? I just can't be like, yeah, Katie Kirk, my dad's a Nazi. <laughs> Everyone yells angry stuff at the cops when they get caught drunk driving. <laughs> you motherfuckers are famous. It's my dad. <laughs> Give me your waffle. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah so everybody cries and they have a big group hug or whatever and then the fucking baby monitor alien detector goes off because the aliens have publicly broadcast their attack signal uh, uh, clearly 
Yes. To all frequencies. On the, on the satellite channel that only baby monitors are hooked <laughs> into. <laughs> really want to hear about how that went back at the mothership. Did you send the order to attack? Yes, sir. O- over every frequency? Oh, yes, sir. They'll hear us coming a mile away. I'm sorry, what? It's going to be fine. Yeah, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fine. All right, yeah, okay, so now the, the aliens are coming. They have to, like, real quick get everything done. They have to board up all the... Well, at this point, they can't board up the windows anymore because they don't have enough old man boards, so they have to start boarding up the doors. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we all switch to all caps <laughs> for a quick moment of oh my god they're boarding a door closed and opens in <laughs> oh, they are they sure are by the way this movie will dedicate a tremendous amount of time and space to how much boarding up they did it will all be useless because they will forget major entrances and exits to this house yep, yep exactly it's the joke in the big lebowski with the chair and they don't realize they've done it it's the greatest yep Absolutely. And so, look, here's the thing about this movie is not only is it covered in dumb shit like them boarding up the window so that the aliens can't get in. None of the dumb shit is ever even necessary. No, right. Never because they're, they're going to end up in the basement. Like you can imagine how they could have really like, you know, locked the fucking basement down in that amount of time anyway. Right. And speaking of dumb shit that doesn't pay off. He stops boarding up the inward facing door to be like, hey, when you were a little girl, you were beautiful. And she's like, hey, is this story boarding up or alien related? Because if it's not, you fucking wait. (laughs) I love the whole time he's doing it, too. Joaquin's hammering like a motherfucker going, yeah, you know, whenever you want to kick in and do the other side, that would be quicker. I hurt my thumb. (laughs) All right, so they head downstairs, and this is when they realize they forgot the fucking dog outside because they are terrible fucking dog owners. <laughs> right, we hear the dog fucking die outside, and I'm like, that was a mercy killing. <laughs> well, why would the aliens kill the dog? Like, they found the barking obnoxious on their way in? <laughs> Dude, they're going to know if we're, god damn it. Yeah. So, yeah, so the aliens show up at the house. Now, we hear them like scurrying around the house trying to deal with all these boards. They have little cute footsteps like when Stewie runs, you know, little yep. pitter patter as they're going. Around. And I'm like, guys, you're supposed to be, this is supposed to be scary though. Yes. And they're going pitter, 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 pitter. <laughs> so, it's, it's like when you open a bag of food near a cat. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, so, and then uh, Mel has to force, because he just told the the little daughter the, the story of when she was born, so he has to force a story for the son, too, and, but nothing happened, right? So he's like, oh, and when you were born, let me tell you. Did I nail Ooh. close the fucking door, man? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Also, at one point, the alien, like, slams against the door, and I really wanted just to hear from the other side, like, Fuck! Oh, my shoulder. <laughs> my shoulder. <laughs> and then, okay, but then they realized that, shit, they forgot the entire attic existed. <laughs> oh, beans! That alien just super got in, didn't he? <laughs> oh. We're so dumb. <laughs> we boarded so many in-facing doors, but not <laughs> the entrances <laughs> to our house. That's on us, I guess. Yeah, you know, like, how could we have possibly known they could jump all the way under roof? Shit, you know what? No, yeah, we should have. We should have done. Jump that. on the we roof. They did that, that early. Swedish aliens. No. This is weird. <laughs> so, all right. So, yeah. Now they run and hide in the basement so that all of the fucking shit they did to board up the house can be useless, and so that we can spend the rest of the goddamn movie right there. Fuck. You know what? I just realized. Are those all outward swinging doors that we nailed? The thing <laughs> on the inside? We need to go to the basement. <laughs> We're dumb. And then, by the way, just in case you're like, wow, are we really going to watch these people sit in a fucking basement this whole time? Joaquin Phoenix's character accidentally knocks out the light bulb and is like, no, we're going to listen to these people sit in a basement. (laughs) Oh, beans, I knocked the light out and I covered us in barbecue sauce. This is not (laughs) great for the alien invasion. I actually accidentally tied myself to this spit and now I can't stop spinning. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> so fucking stupid. All right, so yeah, so they the, the aliens are banging angrily, but Mel Gibson can tell that their heart's not in those bangs, really. He can tell that they are distraction bangs. <laughs> misdirection bangs. What? All right, yeah. He goes, no, they're trying to misdirect us and keep our attention on this door by, like, banging against it periodically as though we were fucking dogs. <laughs> there must be some other way into the basement. And I'm like, well, you guys forgot the entire fucking attic. There's probably windows. <laughs> yeah, did you... <laughs> There's a way into the basement. You mean one you haven't boarded up? Yeah, one we haven't boarded up. That's on us. So, so two of the four entrances to this house. Yes. Yep. Yep. Turns out we did not cover. Everybody list the entrances. I feel like we should have done this from the start. Name them. Coal shoot. Shit. Shit. Yeah. Ah. So they're looking around the basement for the coal shoot, which seems like the kind of thing that you'd have noticed before since it's a giant goddamn coal shoot. There's a moment where Joaquin Phoenix goes, I can feel air. And it's like, yeah, we're in an atmosphere. Everybody, <laughs> yeah. everybody, you can always do that. Really, Little girl is purple next to him. I can't. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So then they, we get that the alien grabs the sun through the grate and the coal chute. But don't worry. They thwart the aliens with large bags of dog ah. food. <laughs> We see the kid standing right in front of the coal chute just as they realize this. Yes, he's yes. Like, he's like, what? Why are you all staring at me weird? Okay, don't tell me there's an alien right behind me. That's so trite. <laughs> Fuck, there is. Uh, these stupid alien mother... Oh, they're right behind me, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, so this kid has asthma. We haven't mentioned it up to this point, but this is the point in the movie where they pull the asthma trigger so that we can watch a kid breathe for a while. Well, we can watch a kid breathe while Mel Gibson threatens God like it's the fucking <laughs> opening of Ransom. <laughs> Listen to me, you fat, white-bearded motherfucker. You get one <laughs> dead family member. Yeah, exactly. I'm already an atheist. <laughs> no, no, if you kill the other one, it doesn't cancel out. I'll um, come back, <laughs> climb a ladder up to heaven, and kick your ass. <laughs> By the way, the aliens stop attacking for the dramatic asthma attack they moment, did. right? That was, that was awfully thoughtful of them. Yeah, so uh, let us deal with that first. All right, so then we cut back to that flashback, right? Just as you're thinking, how the fuck could there possibly be 15 minutes left? We cut back to that flashback, and we finally fell you in on all the details of the dead wife, the most memorable part of the movie, I would think. Like, you know, this is legitimately a good reveal slash twist to have in a better movie. Sure, except... They don't just like be like, oh, she's pinned and she's going to die. They're like her entire lower half of her body is gone. Her blood is circulating through the truck, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he also says, is my wife going to die? And I wanted the cop to be like, uh, unless you brought a spare lower half of her body. then yeah, <laughs> I don't think she's going to make it through this one. Remember when I said she's squished? <laughs> Yeah, so, like, again, though, we just get the setup. She's like, first of all, by the way, the whole pinched wife thing takes way more setup than I remembered it taking. Like, she basically has to pull out a graph, you know, or something like that and say, okay, so here's the, uh, here's where she and the car, and the tree is here. But she, <laughs> she sets this whole thing up and he says, right, do you mean to tell me that this is the last time I'll ever talk to my wife? And she's like, uh, so you're already losing the religion thing. Okay, then yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you got a good speech ready. You got like two minutes. Go. <laughs> All right, but then we cut back out of that flashback, and everybody's waking up in the basement. All of the action of that alien invasion is over. It happened off screen. Yeah, and jo Joaquin heard about it on the radio. Hey, um, the aliens fart poison gas just because this movie wasn't stupid enough. Just so you know, the aliens <laughs> okay. fart poison gas. Did you learn that? Because InfoWars is still on the radio yeah, broadcasting right, right. right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I've written in my notes, well, they slept through a pretty good movie, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the aliens are leaving because people figured out their superhero weakness. We don't learn what it is just yet. It's literally the same thing as goddamn Bruce Willis' superhero weakness <laughs> and unbreakable, but okay. We, uh, we don't know what people managed to do to stop the aliens. Weird that they told us that they stopped them, but not how. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but Mel and, and Joaquin at this point are like, uh, well, do you think it, the aliens are gone enough for us to go up and get the asthma medicine? 
you know, that's the big conflict now. <laughs> and honestly, like attacking the Earth with nothing but farting poison gas, I felt bad for the aliens in this scenario. Right? Oh, oh God. Oh, that stinks. Uh, that stinks uh, so much. What, what the hell happened to you? Oh, Dude, wow. so many of them have guns. So uh, many. Like they're military so or? Uh... No, no. Just like regular humans, too. They, they, they all just, they have fucking guns. All what? of them. They, what? All why would they all have guns? I don't know why they all have guns, but they do. Like even, so many guns. Even the little ones? Little ones. Yeah, big ones, little ones, all of them. It's fucking crazy. This is bullshit. Oh, even the baby had a gun. We do have a lot of guns. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so they decide they have to go back upstairs to get the asthma medication. And then Joaquin Phoenix stops the whole process and is like, hold on, I need to give a speech here. This is important. <laughs> I can deal with fucking alien attacks. That's fine. What I cannot deal with is your atheism. You've lost your faith, and that's ridiculous. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> You're being a Debbie Downer. He's like, uh, asthma attack, child, child dying right now. Can we talk about it later? Great. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, okay. But, but, but Can you tell that, me in a that, positive though. way? Tell me a good way that the child is dying of an <laughs> asthma attack. And I just want to point out, this is all movies, not just Christian ones. Movies all think that asthma is half heart attack, half negative thinking. <laughs> like, do movies know something actually happens with your lungs during a heart attack? Because they seem to be pretty sure that you could just, like, rub some tussin in it and breathe anyways. <laughs> They're very confused by what an asthma attack is. Yeah. Oh, so do they, do they know that asthma medicine is portable? Right, because like <laughs> I, I would, I would send Joaquin up, be like, "Hey, man, go get the medicine and bring it back down." But no, they bring the kid up and everything else. You know, they're like, "Oh, well, you know, Alex Jones said on the radio there was no more aliens, so I guess everything is safe now." <laughs> Can't use the inhaler. We got to bring him to the iron lung up there. Yeah. That's the only hope. Right. So they they bring everybody upstairs, and the little girl says, "Hey, you know, on the TV they're celebrating the defeat of the aliens since they all left." This is where they give us the line where they're like, you know, three small cities in the Middle East found a way to defeat the aliens. They didn't tell us yet what it was, though. <laughs> I'm like, oh, was that the part of Earth where it rained that day? <laughs> pretty, <Perhaps>. busy, <laughs> pretty busy uh, celebrating, but I'm sure they'll tell us eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So Mel Gibson, the TV's still in the closet from earlier, from that gag earlier. So Mel Gibson goes to get it. He has to turn off the TV just as they're explaining how to defeat the aliens. And damn it, if there wasn't an alien in the house the whole fucking time, it's the one from the fucking pantry, y'all, with the fingers chopped off. So this is a vengeance alienating, just to be clear. Yeah. And so he's picked up the kid, the son, and he's holding his poison gas node over the kid's face. He's just like, I stay back. I'll stick him with my pointy thumb it's it's for fish on my plate you know what i don't owe you an explanation i'll stab it with my pointy thumb <laughs> <laughs> wait you guys have fish but you're allergic to water what's going it's, on it's there? weird yeah, it's, it's a, a whole thing i don't want to get our fish it. don't it's liquid nitrogen <laughs> and then, then fucking mel gibson's like oh my god they're about to the aliens about to kill all of us i need to finish that goddamn flashback now Right. You know what this alien hostage situation reminds me of? <laughs> reminds me of? Reminds me of? <laughs> yeah, so we pop back into his flashback, which is fucking ridiculous, right? This is the conversation he has with the wife that we've set up for so long. And there's, you know, she's like, yeah, I was going to go for a walk before dinner. And he literally says, here's the line. Yeah, you love walks. What? We set this up <laughs> for the whole movie. Walks are fun. Stupid. Okay. Uh, does the the truck inside your pelvis hurt? <laughs> and she's like, nah. Anyway, <laughs> I I have some important messages for everybody in the the movie. Uh, tell Morgan, uh, my son, to play games and be silly. Okay, do that anyway, but that okay. wasn't great. Uh, let me go again. Uh, <laughs> tell Graham, you that's your Graham. Uh, tell you. <laughs> To see? So, okay. Yep. No, I got this. I got this. Sorry. Last thing. Uh, baseball. What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> tell, tell Joaquin Phoenix to 
a uh, swing away, three zero count. You know, green light. <laughs> go, go for it. I have three messages, one of which is divine, and the other two are pretty mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Tell Morgan to play games. Tell Bo to listen to her sister, and tell Meryl to throw water at the aliens late in Act Three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, the alien this entire time is standing there like. Are you doing a doodly do? It feels like you're doing a doodly do. I'm still here with your son. I was gonna heal the asthma with my thing. Yeah, That's actually, right. You assumed it was a murder. Can I just get your attention for a second? I'm doing a cool thing here. Just finish up doodly do, but then over here. Wait. Yeah. So, and then we have to spend a minute, like, you know, showing you scenes from earlier in the movie, trying to make you think that something just added up, but it didn't. No, it does not. And then, so. Mel Gibson looks up at the bat, right? Because there's the bat that he set the home run record with and it's it's hanging on the wall. And he's like, I was just flashing back about that fucking bat. Meryl, <laughs> this is going to sound fucking crazy. But you know that big <laughs> alien that we're about to fight? You should hit it with a bat. <laughs> I would not have had this idea if my wife hadn't told me this. Yes. Keep in mind, oh her God. hint was not water related these aliens are killed by water yep. she, her hint could have been get the hose it's fuck them <laughs> up <Meryl. laughs> right so the alien hears this and is like oh you're gonna you're gonna be able up you know what i'm not gonna use my super advanced albuterol <laughs> that comes out of my little hand thing uh, <laughs> now it's poison. poison i'm switching it over to poison <laughs> asshole there you go so meryl takes the bat off the wall yeah and i wanted so badly for him to swing and miss a bunch because he's a strikeout king. <laughs> Just like five minutes of him flailing wildly, striking out like Bugs Bunny. Oh. Oh, why don't we have any Latino neighbors? This was stupid. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. Yeah, so and and then like again, like Eli says, the whole water thing. One of the dumbest, maybe the well, okay, second. Top three dumbest things in this entire fucking movie. The fact that the aliens are allergic to water doesn't even matter, right? The fucking, the, the poison didn't work because the kid had his asthma attack going and he couldn't breathe it anyway. And the kid, and, and Meryl had already basically killed the thing with the bat before they noticed that the water was also having ill effects. Right. But again, <laughs> With the water, I really want to hear how that report back to base went for the aliens. Right? Yes, Colonel Yager Gluck. What news of your invasion of the humans? Oh, Jesus, what happened to you, Makla? Hi. Yeah, uh, about the invasion, did you guys know that this planet is covered in dihydrogen monoxide? The the acid that melts our flesh? Yep, that's the one. Covered. You mean like there's trace amounts in the atmosphere? No. Or... No, it literally covers 70% of this planet. Like more than that, even if you count all of the stuff that's in the air and their bodies and just falling out of the sky. Out of the sky. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. And get this. They pump it, like, right into their houses, and they drink it. It's drink everywhere. It. They drink the deadly toxin that melts our flesh. Yeah, they drink it. They bathe in it. That shit is everywhere. Wow. Well, we should not have invaded there then. No. Right? No, no we should not have. Yeah. That's, that's my bad. That one's on me. You think? Yeah. All right, so yeah, then we get the we get the POV shot of the alien dying of the water, gets hit in the dick <laughs> with a bat, and then gets killed <laughs> by water after having yeah. gotten his fingers chopped off. This alien story is so goddamn sad. <laughs> yeah, no, he's allergic to knives, wood, bats being yep. hit yep. by wood mm -hmm. bats and yeah. water. Yep. Yeah, exactly. All right, so so Merrill kills the alien, and then he runs outside where Mel Gibson is sitting there with his son explaining the whole asthma thing. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, the poison gas couldn't get him because his lungs were all closed up with asthma and shit. I'm not playing. The floor is not lava. I'm not playing. The floor is not lava. Um, I'm 
not positive how asthma works, but I don't think like your lungs become airtight when you have an <laughs> asthma attack. I don't think that's how it works. But this is now Mel Gibson's come to Jesus moment, right? He's like, God did all of this on purpose. That's why God gave my kid asthma so that he wouldn't be breathing. When And I'm like, couldn't God have just not had the alien kidnap your kid? Right, like honestly, if you just hadn't chopped his fingers off, they probably would have let him back on the fucking ship. Uh, they already paid for that part of it. <laughs> also, by the way, was there maybe some non-killing your wife way that God could have said, "Hey, hit him with a bat"? <laughs> hit him you with just, a now bat. that you now that honestly, like, I mean, I don't want to give him notes, but you know, <laughs> it could have just occurred to you to hit the thing you're fighting with a bat. <laughs> I with a bat. I hit him with a bat. You're not dying or anything. I don't feel like this is genuine advice. I'm not. Doing that. Yeah, come on. Your wife turns to you on a Thursday night and is like, "Hey, hon, if we ever get attacked yeah. by aliens, use uh -huh. weapons." Mm. Weapons? I don't think that sticks with me. Kind of dumb, dumb shit are you talking? About? Why don't you go for a walk? Also, if a bat works, a gun works, which means that God gave him the shittiest possible advice. Right? She could have been like, "Bye." A gun. <laughs> or, or buy a super soaker. <laughs> like that's, what, that's what we learned was the like primitive method that they yeah, used in right? the Middle East to defeat them was super soakers. Water balloons. <laughs> Splash fight. We won. Oh, when he hits him with the first water glass and we see it burn away the alien skin, I so wanted like a to start and they're just like <laughs> spraying back and forth. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so then we, we flash forward to sometime later. Mel is Christian again, because man, if there's anything that intelligent life elsewhere in the galaxy would strengthen, it's Christian faith. <laughs> so it's it's uh snowing. And it turns, and I was I was so hoping that they were celebrating Christmas with the alien they've since befriended, <laughs> right? Like the alien <laughs> pops his head in the door. Mel, are you coming? I made meatloaf. Blippity pliggity clock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they hit him oh. with a snowball. He starts burning to death. <laughs> oh, <come> on, man. <laughs> Sorry, Mark Lar, that's on us. That's on us. Cool. All right. So, closing question though, for realsies. Why did they keep letting M. Night make movies after this? Look, I get, like, he's made eight more and counting. He self-finances at this point. I get that nobody's paying for them but him. But still, like, if the gaffers and grips wanted it bad enough, they could stop him. Yeah. Why has that not fucking happened? Yeah, there's a lot of a lot that's, of people have said yes to a lot of terrible ideas. The twist is that M. Night Shyamalan still makes movies. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the surprise reality. ending of science. <laughs> 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 the surprise ending of science is the happening. <laughs> All right, so that is going to do it for our review of science, but it's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to promise to do worse next time. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, we've had way too much fun today, so it's time to bum everyone out with the newly made anti-vax viral quote-unquote documentary, Plandemic. Oh, God damn it. It's really? about how COVID isn't real. Yeah. You know the thing that you can go outside and get that will kill you right now? Mm hmm It's about how that's not real. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Glad to know that I have... That to look forward to. So we're going to bring episode 247 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make this show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. If you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Ride, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song is written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of People Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. M. Night Shyamalan's wife got killed by a truck. Her dying words? Make the happening with Marky Mark to help out a podcast about terrible movies. <laughs> Mel Gibson would go on to never headline a major motion picture again unless you count Edge of Darkness, and you don't.
Joaquin Phoenix would go on to be way, way better at pretending to be crazy. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.